Hey, welcome Max Legends to the K Max, and today we're going to talk about some of the common challenges that you may have when you're teaching someone a squat or a deadlift, or when you're doing a squat and a deadlift. And some of the things that I've been informed from some of my graduates, uh, Adam in particular, he uh, shouted out and says, oh, How do you overcome this challenge? And two of the challenges that he has is getting people to do a deadlift properly with the bar going over their knee and they find it a little bit awkward. And number two, keeping your feet flat on the ground when you're doing a squat without the back of the heel coming up and uh, causing that forward uh, lean. So let's have a look at one of these uh, first. But before we even get to that, how about we look at how to do a squat and how to do a deadlift. Now, whether you do a squat or a deadlift, they're basically the same exercise. The only difference is a squat, the, the weight might be on your back in the form of a barbell and you're going down and up and a deadlift is the weight you shift the weight from here to the front of your thighs and you go down and up or you may use dumbbells or kettlebells whether one hand or one weight in the middle or doing a dumbbell in each arm so let's have a look at the fundamentals of doing a squat and then I'm going to try to make it very simple very easy without making it to complicate it. So before you even start using your weight, it might be good to teach people how to basically do a squat with your own body weight. So what we're going to get you to do is I want you to stand, you're obviously looking at me, and I want you to stand upright and try to be aware of the weight distribution through the soles of your feet. So your weight should be equally distributed through your feet or the sole of your foot. Now, if I sort of shift my center of gravity forward by a loose forward lean, then I'm gonna feel more weight on the ball of the foot. If I shift my center of gravity or my midline backwards, I'm gonna feel weight on the heel of the foot. What you wanna do is you do a squat, you wanna keep your weight equally distributed. So rather than when you go down, you feel the weight on the ball of the foot, or you go down, you feel the weight on the heel of the foot, that's not what you want to feel. You want to feel it going equally through your entire foot. So a good starting point is rather than thinking about bend the knee, release the hip, keep the back straight, all those complex movements we tend to you know, confuse you, just keep it really simple. Is your weight distribution through your feet? And all I want you to do from here is be aware of your weight distribution. You can close your eyes if you want so you're more sens sensitively more sensitive, if that makes sense. And from there, I just want you just to release your joints, your hip and the knee, without con consciously thinking which one should go first, but release them together and just drop, keep your center of gravity through the center of your feet so the weight is equally distributed through your foot. And just release down and come up. Release down and come up. Without being too conscious of what you should be doing, just keep that weight distributed through the center or through equally distributed through the soles of your feet. Down and up. And if you do that, you find that you tend to naturally just go into that natural position that's ideal for you. Because everybody is biomechanically different, different lever lengths. Therefore, someone tall with long levers and someone short with short levers, they're gonna squat slightly differently. But the fundamentals will be the same. The joints, the hip, the knee, and the ankle will all release together, though you keep your, the, the the center mass through your center line of your body, coming down and up. Now, some of you may feel that you want to take your arms out because you think your calves or your Achilles is inflexible. Therefore, you feel that as you go down is that your, your heels come off the ground. And the reason for that is because you're not actually distributing your weight equally through your foot. You're putting it onto the balls of the feet. So from here, just keep the weight equally distributed and then release down and release the hip, release the knee together. Now some might be able to keep your back more upright, some way want to flex of the hip and have that little forward lean. Doesn't really matter as long as your back is straight, whether it be in the upright position or a slight forward lean, as I do. I tend to have to lean a little bit more. It means I basically release the hip a bit more to keep my weight equally distributed throughout my foot. And try to avoid putting a, uh, a little block underneath the heels because that's 
cheating. <laughs> That's using ex external support, which is not going to teach your body how to naturally do that because you're always going to be relying on that high heel to do the exercise. Because when you're in the general life's activities and in function, you're not going to have that there for you. If I'm going to pick something up off the ground and you have a nice strong base, I want to keep my heel on the ground so I have a good support through my foot to lift the weight up. So that might be a good starting point just to teach yourself and your clients how to control your weight and keep it in the line with your center line, your center mass, while doing the exercise, while keeping the weight equally distributed, distributed throughout your feet. So now let's go to another common challenge that people will have when they're doing, say, the barbell or deadlift. Now my suggestion is even before you get to the barbell or deadlift or the barbell or squat, that you teach people how to just basically use your own body weight and then you can progress on to using dumbbells. Now, dumbbells in each hand for a number of reasons. Number one, dumbbells are functional because when you pick things up off the ground, whether it be picking up your baby or picking up the washing or picking up your shopping or picking up a rock in the garden, the weight is down here. So to train with the weight down here rather than up here or in front here, then it's gonna be more natural anyway and more functional related to daily life activity. So, you may grab a couple of dumbbells, I've got a couple of plates here. I've got two plates, keep them in line with your center of gravity or your center of mass, your midline, right? And then do the exercise from there. You may find it actually easier with a little bit of weight in the hand than your own body weight because the weight tends to pull you down and ground your feet into the ground. So it can be quite helpful if you find someone's finding a bit awkward with their own body weight, put a bit of weight, not too much weight, where they, you know, when they actually lose their form. Uh, enough weight just to keep themselves a bit grounded and then keep your down, same philosophy, weight equally distributed throughout your feet, down and up. If you can see from the side, I'm keeping the weight in alignment with my midline, with my center of gravity or center of mass, down and back up, down and back up. Now some people may feel they still have that little need the way the heel comes off the ground, well that's okay, use the weight to counter that. So what you might do is to keep the heel on the ground, you need to flex the hip more to keep your weight onto the heel. So if I stay upright, if I stay, I try to stay upright and I try to keep my back straight, my knee's going to go forward, it's going to lift my heels off. How do I counter that is release in the hip. Stick the bottom out and that will bring the, the heels down. If I stay upright, the knees go forward, putting more stress on the knees, take the stress off the knee, release the hip, put the weight more back onto your heel, where the weight is now equally distributed. If you find that a little bit awkward, you're releasing the hip back, where you feel that you need that counterbalance, put the hand in front, and over time, bring the hand in while you gather that control through those joints. And that can be also be performed by putting the weight slightly in front, to counter that backward lean, and then over time, you will bring the weight, as you get better at it, down to your centre of gravity, which is right through your midline of your mass. Obviously maintaining perfect form, knee in line with your toes, that, that your knees or your feet pronate in, don't take them out. Your weight, don't take your knees too far forward, don't take your bottom out and keep your back nice and straight, maintaining that natural lumbar curve. So you may find that if you go to the barbell, because the barbell, see my barbell, with that massive invisible weight, if I put a barbell there, because I have to clear the weight over my knees, which is in front of my midline, then I might find that a little bit awkward because I want to sort of, I now actually lean forward to get the weight over my knees to clear the bar over my knees. So the idea is to be able to keep your body, your hip more back to counter that forward lean. Because if I take the barbell over my knees, then the line of weight is slightly in front of my midline. So I have to counter that by leaning back. And some people may not feel they have the, the uh, the flexibility or the skill to do that. Now you can develop that skill by actually doing more of it with a light barbell, keeping the heels flat, going down 
and back up. But a good starting point, if you can't do that, is start with dumbbells. So you may take the weight forward and back, and over time, bring the weight in. And once you get to the stage where the weight that you're lifting is quite heavy, and you can do it with great form and great technique with dumbbells, then progress on to my very heavy barbell. There and back. Because you've already developed a great base doing the dumbbells. And most people, general population, just doing dumbbells is going to be plenty of weight enough. It's only when you get to the stage where you can't physically grip the amount of weight in a dumbbell that you may want to go to a bell barbell up here where you don't have to grip the weight, where you just put the weight in the line of your spine, which brings other complications which I'll talk about soon. But body weight first, with good technique, good form, weight equally distributed. If you feel that your heels come off the ground, that's easy, release the hip a bit more, counter that weight with your hands in front, but over time, you'll find that you'll get that rebalancing check where you can keep your hands in close. Then you can add dumbbells. I've got plates here. If you still feel that, your heels come off the ground, stick your bottom out a bit more, bring that weight more towards your heel, to equally distribute that weight through your feet. If you feel you need to counter, just take the weight slightly in front of you to counter that backward lean. And over time, you find you get the control where the weight will be in direct alignment with your center of gravity or your midline. And that's where you feel strong because the actions of the muscles are going directly against the load and keeping it into your center of mass where you're perfectly balanced to generate maximal force. When you progress onto a barbell, again, because the weight tends to go slightly forward to get it out over your knees, particularly if you've got long levers, then you're going to feel that need to lean back a bit more, lean back a bit more. But over time, starting with light weights, you'll be able to get that nice balance to go into a good barbell deadlift. Even though I don't believe a barbell deadlift is necessary, because you can still get plenty of work just doing the dumbbells. Or using quite significantly heavy dumbbells, keep it in the middle, so now you don't have to worry about your knees because your knees can go forward past the weight rather than having the weight in front of your knees. So you, your weight can be behind your knees, knees closer to your center of gravity or your midline rather than putting the weight in front. So using very heavy dumbbells like that is going to be heavy enough and make you strong enough to serve your life from a functional point of view. It's only maybe if you want, if you're a competitive power lifter, you need to lift very heavy weights for your sport. It might be a front row in the, in the All Blacks, in rugby union, where you need that high levels of power and force, that you may go to a barbell, and may also go to a barbell on your back. But the challenge with the weight on your back is that for the general population, this in itself is an awkward position, because I take my shoulder into abduction, lateral rotation, which puts my shoulder in a dislocation position, and it's very uncomfortable if I don't have the flexibility. Plus, to accommodate for that, if I don't have flexibility in the spine, I tend to stick my neck forward, and I feel shoulder pain, neck pain, so that's awkward. Even for myself, who's an athlete, I used to do these when I was young, but obviously I'm suffering the consequences of it now. So that's quite uncomfortable. Plus, it makes me top heavy. The weight's up high, which means I'm top heavy, that means it gives me less stability. Plus, the weight is going directly down my spine in a lower position, causing compression forces through my vertebral column, which is not ideal with compression forces through your vertebral column because that can put stress in your lower back if you're not used to it. So yes, you may be able to justify it if you're a power lifter, a lithic lifter, and maybe you're playing in the All Blacks for the front rower, or whatever, front row of a rugby league, rugby where you need develop massive compression forces through your spine, and then you can control, do it in a controlled way. But for 99.9% .9 of us near mortals, just doing dumbbell squats, dumbbell deadlifts, and maybe barbell deadlifts if I have the skill, will service our optimal strength needs to live an optimal life and a quality of life with the strength. Because any more strength beyond what you need 
is really putting your body into a red, the red district, a little bit of the red line, a little bit of the danger zone. You know I mean, you're getting stronger, but it's not actually serving you your life. Optimal strength for any more strength gains beyond uh, your requirements is not needed, but it's putting high amounts of stress through the body. And from a sporting point of view, optimal strength is any more strength uh, gain beyond <clears throat> my performance is not going to add to my performance. So you get to that level of strength that you need. Now certainly sports such as if you're a front rower or a forward in rugby union or rugby league, you're going to need a high, higher level of strength, like a, a wrestler, high level of strength. But if you, you're uh, doing a sport which has, you have to overcome a lighter implement, whether it be tennis or badminton or baseball or, or cricket, then you're not going to need those high levels of strength or basketball for that matter. So if you're going to go onto the barbell uh, squat uh, with um, up here in the shoulders, that's going to be more reserved for elite athletes who've already, if you're going to do that, you've already developed a high level of strength doing dumbbell squats, dumbbell deadlifts, and barbell deadlifts to a very high level of strength, and then maybe you can justify putting on your back. But for 99.9% .9 of the population, all you're doing is increasing the risk of injury, discomfort, and pain, and, and possibly you know, damage, uh, but you're not really going to get any extra benefit. It's not going to make your life any better having that extra level of strength. All you're going to do is increase your chances of injury. And the most important thing as an exercise professional, as you know, you're there to train the muscle and protect the joint and keep your client safe. They don't come to you to say, I want you to injure me. They come to you because they, they want you to improve their performance to improve their quality of life. So see you in the next K-Max.